All right, so let's explore this in a bit more detail. Laundry Nintret is the Africa Regional Director, 350.org, is joining us live um, on the program. So, Laundry, good to see you here. Um, protests this week, uh, not just at the AGM uh, of Total Shell also, I believe, was targeted with activists at one point gluing themselves to chairs there. But 90% of Total shareholders approved the company's climate change strategy. Why is that strategy the wrong one, in your view? Uh, good evening, Ramai. Thank you for having me. I think the strategy uh, that was adopted uh, yesterday remains fundamentally problematic because it doesn't exclude um, harmful and polluting products. This is uh, an example. Uh, the company is still planning and pushing hard to build the East African crude oil pipeline, a pipeline that, if built, would generate up to uh, uh, 34 million tons of uh, uh, carbon dioxide annually, that will present the, um, uh, a figure which is six times bigger, the current emissions of uh, a country like Uganda. And also globally, uh, Total continue to invest heavily in fossil fuels. Oil, gas will still represent 70% of its global investment. And this is a serious threat to uh, ordinary citizens and communities uh, and the environment, of course. Meantime, it's uh, presenting the, um, the company continues to engage in green ocean strategies, creating the impression that it is uh, shifting to renewables, but the reality is very different. And interestingly, it's important to note that uh, 10 of its institutional uh, shareholders clearly spoke, uh, uh, spoke out against uh, that plan, showing that even internally within Total, they are decent voice. And this is all happening at a time where uh, UN agencies and a lot of uh, scientific evidence are telling us that clearly uh, there is need to stop all fossil, uh, fossil fuel investment if we were to maintain uh, the global warming to 1.5 degree, uh, uh, degrees Celsius to avert further uh, climate impact. So the, but, but it is, it is all well and good to say that you know, we, can't, we should stop you know, fossil fuel investments altogether. But then what's, what's the alternative and where will the money to fund those alternatives come from. If you're looking at a country like Uganda, for example, and we say, okay, we're stopping the East African pipeline completely. You're not essentially going to be tapping into the oil reserves that we're seeing in Western Uganda in the Albertine Rift. They're still going to have to import fossil fuels. It powers a big chunk of their economy. So what's the alternative for a country like Uganda? Yeah, it's also very uh, important to note for our viewers that even the, the oil that will be produced in Uganda won't, will be exported so it's oil which won't be refined or transformed on the place, but will be exported all the way to Europe, to France, or other places where they plan to do so, and imported again in Africa. So clearly, it's not a type of investment or uh, production which is going to benefit uh, primarily uh, Ugandans. I, 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 hear, Uganda I, hear what, I hear what you're saying, Laundry, but, but just to refocus the question, right? If, if we say no more fossil fuels now, right, and you're looking at this entire fleet of personal cars, border borders, those little small displacement motorbikes, um, trucks, ETC, ETC, that a lot of economies, it's not just a Uganda thing, a lot of your economies here in Africa rely on fossil fuels and we're saying no, no more oil coming out of the ground. Then what's, what's the alternative? Because a lot of people watching this will say, okay, it's all well and good to say, let's cut emissions, but stopping oil exploration altogether seems pretty drastic if there's no realistic cost-effective alternative. But, but again, Rama, the, the science is very clear. If we were to um, advert uh, the catastrophic climate change that we are seeing right now on the African continent elsewhere, there is a need to stop and transition. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not that tomorrow there won't be any new production of oil. Definitely it's needed for our economies, for our infrastructure and our movement. But again, if we look at the future and the long term, um, uh, in Africa and elsewhere, they have to be a very clear, urgent uh, shift toward a transition which can allow us and lead us to a place where we have uh, a type of uh, energies that can sustain, that are sustainable, that are not contradicting and adding more emissions uh, to our planet, to our ecosystem, especially for countries like Africa, which is already uh, severely hit by a number of uh, uh, impacts that we are seeing in the Horn of Africa, in the Sahel region and elsewhere. So it's not that uh, it's, going, it's a production which is going to end tomorrow, but there have to be clear measures and pathway and implementation uh, plans showing how that uh, drastic and uh, um, urgent measures have to be taken in order to maintain 
a type of planet which is viable, not only for us, but also for future generations. Right, so we're also seeing a lot more attention being directed to natural gas projects, however, here in Africa mm -hmm. from from Mozambique, where Total, of course, is due to resume its offshore gas project, one of the largest private sector investments um, on the continent, to Senegal. The German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, is there um, trying to essentially mm -hmm. explore investments in gas projects. Given what we've discussed, is, is 350.org's position still that it should be there should be no more investments in any fossil fuel projects on the continent? Absolutely. Again, uh, it's not 350. It's already the science that uh, has shown that if we are to prevent further catastrophic climate impact, there should be no uh, new fossil fuel built. And the ones actually that exist have also to be phased out. And Ram, the, our continent is blessed with abundant uh, sources of renewable energy. I would be very interested um, to, to, to hear the Vice Chancellor, I mean, the, the Chancellor of, of Germany or Total, uh, pushing more towards investment in such sector. Because this is the one which not only can... But, that, but that's the crux the of the matter, isn't it, though? Because you have a situation here where, yes, we say we've got all these lovely natural resources available, plenty of solar available, 12 mm -hmm. hours a day. You've got uh, projects like uh, Grand Inga, which are fantastic on paper, 30 gigawatts of hydro, uh, potential electricity coming out of there. But it always comes back down to the money. If South Africa is struggling to get $250 billion for its transition away from coal, I mean, what chance do the rest of the economy stand to be able to fund these renewable energy projects? There is uh, also a, a question of responsibility, especially from the countries that have benefited for so long uh, from this uh, uh, type of investment to support African um, economies at the moment trying to transform uh, themselves and transition to a pathway which is just, which is fair, and which is sustainable. So again, uh, it comes to the point of getting enough support, enough resources. And that's why I think the African continent have to raise louder uh, its voice and advocate for the investment, not in your fossil fuels, but in the type of investment that can ensure safety uh, of its population and also resources. Because at the majority of this investment, at the end of the day, or don't necessarily benefit the local economies or the local population. The you know, vast majority of the, this profit go back to the uh, you know, mother companies and uh, foreign uh, companies. And again, this is happening with expenses of the population and also exacerbating further the project that we're already in. So that's why we're saying, let's look at the solutions that work. Let's not continue to fall in the trap of addiction to fossil fuel because that will be a continuation of extractivism and new colonies. I think this has to come to the end. That's why you've seen, uh, you know, this week where we celebrate Africa Day, protests happening not only in Kenya, but also in Uganda, in DRC, and South Africa elsewhere, for people to claim and advocate for a right transition uh, which can be sustainable for our planet.